Hello everybody, welcome to the first of two S2 BGE literacy lessons. So these lessons are going to be focusing on the skill of using formal and informal language. Now each lesson has an accompanying worksheet which you'll find on Teams as an assignment and that worksheet contains all of the tasks that are going to be in this lesson and that is where you should go to complete the work for this lesson. So there will be one worksheet for today's lesson and a separate worksheet for the next lesson, which is lesson two. So let's get started with a starter task. Now this is going to be on your worksheet, as I've said, and it's just called starter task. And this one is broken down into two separate parts. So the first part of the starter task is testing to see what you might already know about formal language and when it should be used. So it's asking you to look at a list of situations and highlight the ones where you think formal language should be used. The second part of the task, oh, it's disappeared there, is just asking you to look at a list of three words from the academic word list and you should use them to come up with a sentence and write it in the box underneath. Now try and use all three words if you can, but if you're finding that too tricky, then just use one word or two words. That's absolutely fine. So pause the video and have a go at that just now. OK, so this lesson is going to be focusing on formal language. So the first thing we need to talk about is what is formal language, if you don't already know. So formal language is the kind of English that we use when we want to seem more professional, respectful or serious. It's important for things like job interviews, giving a presentation or writing an essay or report. Any time when you would need to seem um, a bit more serious and less chatty. OK, so as a quick reminder, formal language is usually more correct and more exact. It's more complex and has longer sentences. And it's usually serious and not containing personal information or personal opinions. OK, so the first task on your worksheet after the starter task is called identifying task. So you'll see that labelled exactly the same way on the assignment worksheet for the lesson. And what it's asking you to do is read a jumbled list of formal and informal phrases and highlight only the examples of formal language. So you can highlight directly onto the worksheet for this task and it should be nice and quick and straightforward. So pause the video and have a go at that one now. OK, well done. So the next task, we're just firing on to the next one is called translating task. And again, it's labeled exactly the same way on the team's assignment worksheet. To be successful in this second task, what you should do is read each sentence and then try to translate the informal language into formal language. So some of these sentences are gonna be a bit too chatty and they're not formal language. So you're gonna to need to have a look at what the sentence is telling you, what it's trying to say and translate that into a more professional, respectful version of the same information. So for example, you might hear somebody say, she was pure buzzing to get to the concert, right? And we all know what that means, but that is informal. So you might translate that to say, she was extremely excited to get to the concert. So you're gonna be doing that for each sentence on the sheet. So pause the video and try that one now. OK, we're doing really well. So the next task is a writing task. So a little bit more challenging, this one, perhaps. So it's called writing task on the team's assignment worksheet. For this task, what you're going to need to do is read the informal paragraph that you're given. And then you're going to be given two choices, depending on whether you've got the differentiated or the non differentiated worksheet. So you're either going to be rewriting the paragraph using formal language to make it sound more professional and you do that in the box that you've been given. Or you might be filling in the blank spaces with formal language from the word bank that you've been given. So either way, pause the video and try that one now. OK, doing really well. So the next task is an optional extension task. So if you're feeling like you've done really well in this lesson so far, 
you want to push yourself a little bit more, have an extra challenge, then you can try this one. So try to complete this task if you can. So this one's towards the bottom of the worksheet, it's called extension task. So what I'd like you to do is look at what's called the academic word list. So you can follow this website link and that should be on the worksheet for you as well. And what I'd like you to do is pick out three words. It's quite a big list, so it might take you a wee minute. Pick out three words that you'd like to use when you're writing in the future and write them down alongside a short definition. So write them down along with their meaning. Pause the video, try that now. All right, well done everybody. So to end today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the private reading project. I'll give you a little bit of a reminder about what exactly that is why we're doing it and what you should be focusing on. OK, so just as a reminder, remember that you should be continuing to work on your private reading project at this time, even though we're not in school. So what you should be doing, remember, is either reading three novels or six short stories before Friday the 5th of February. Now, if you've realised that you've gone away home and you haven't had a chance to grab your library book or you're struggling to find something to read, Remember that you've got Brown's books, so you can log on there and tag your teacher and ask them if you're not sure you can't remember how to get on. But there is also a collection of short stories that's been added to your OneNote, um, probably in the content library. But again, if you can't find it, tag your teacher in a wee message on Teams and ask. But there should be, um, I think, something like 10 short stories on there for you that you'll be able to access and read so that everybody has got some reading to be doing towards their private reading project. So three novels or six short stories. And then you should be using OneNote to make notes on the characterisation, setting, structure and theme of your stories. So just like you would do if we were reading a novel in class. And remember that if you can't um, quite remember exactly why we're doing it or you'd like a little bit more information again, just to remind yourselves, the full YouTube video with the explanation for the whole project and why we're doing it is on the Bertha Park English YouTube channel. And the link for that video is also in your worksheet for today's class. So you can click on that and watch it if you've forgotten and you need a wee reminder. OK, so the final task that I'd like you to do for this lesson is towards the private reading project. So I'd like you to take some time, even as little as 10 minutes, to do some reading towards your project now. So when you've finished the reading, there's a task at the bottom of the worksheet and you must complete that as part of today's lesson. So it asks you to add some notes and there's a box provided where you can add these notes on characterisation, setting, structure and theme. Now remember, unfortunately, we're not able to use Flipgrid to do this anymore. So that's why you're going to be doing it on the sheet and you might make some notes on one note as well going forward. Or, depending on which worksheet you're working from today, you might be asked to write a short summary about what you have read. OK, so you can pause the video and have a go at that. But that is the end of today's lesson. So well done and we'll see you next time for the lesson on informal language.